Hello guys. So in this video, we are going to be coding out the first part of the rag pipeline uh, called the ingestion pipeline, right? So in the previous video, we looked at a bunch of theory regarding rags. In this video, we are going to be coding it out. So uh, first thing is, let us quickly go ahead and set up our development environment. So what I have done is I've just created a folder called rag for beginners in my computer, opened it using my Visual Studio code. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file called ingestion pipeline.py okay so this is where we are going to write out all the code where we are going to load all the source documents and then we are going to chunk it up okay if you remember we chunked it up right and then we are going to embed each of those chunks and then we are going to store it in the vector database that is going to be the part one of the rag system right and for this file we need a couple of dependencies uh, and uh, I want to go with virtual environment this time, but if you are going to be working with larger projects, then you ideally want to go with poetry. So I'm going to go ahead and open the terminal and then I'm going to say Python 3. Okay, so I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to say Python 3, but if you've got a Windows machine, then you can just say Python. And I want to use a particular module inside of Python and the module that I want to use is the VENV module. And I want to create a folder right here to save all of my dependencies. And I want to name that uh, that folder as VENV as well. So if I go ahead and press enter, you should be able to see the VENV folder created right here. Now, the next step is we have to activate uh, this particular VENV, meaning we want the terminal to point to this VENV. Right now it is pointing to global. We want it to point to VENV. So in Mac, the command is going to be uh, source. Okay, I'm going to go inside of VENV and I'm going to go inside of bin and inside of bin, we have the activate file. I'm going to press enter. So right now you should be able to see that the terminal is now pointing to the virtual environment right here. For Windows, the command is a little different, uh, but it is well documented in the internet. You can go look it up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to install a few dependencies, uh, pretty basic dependencies. We are going to be using Langchain classes because they just make uh, life a lot easier when working with rags and LLMs. So I'm going to go ahead and install the Langchain package and then Langchain community. And we're also going to install the Langchain text splitter because if you remember, we have to do chunking, right? So this particular package allows for uh, splitting text. So Langchain text splitters and then we need Langchain OpenAI because we need to use the embedding model of OpenAI. And then we need Langchain Chroma and this Chroma is going to be the vector database. If you remember, we need some database where we should be able to store all of the vectors, right? So we're going to be using the Chroma vector store. And then finally, we also need python.env. So let's go ahead and press enter. Okay, so it is taking a couple of seconds and perfect, it is done. And now I'm going to go ahead and paste a few imports and let's go through it line by line. So the first thing is from the Langchain community document loaders module, we are importing two different classes. Both these classes are going to help us read text files or PPTs or docx files from a particular directory. And the next thing is we need the character text splitter because if you remember, uh, once we do load all the source documents, we need to chunk it up, right? So that is why we need this particular class. And next thing is we need the embedding model, right? So we need this embedding model to convert the chunks to vector embeddings. So we are going to be making use of Langchain OpenAI. So after the embedding process right here, we have all of the vector embeddings. Now we have to store it somewhere. So we need a vector database. So the vector database that we are going to be using today is the Chroma vector database. So the main reason why I go with Chroma DB is because we can host it locally. It makes things a whole lot easier. And then finally, we are loading all of the environment variables. Uh, so if at all we in the future create uh, the environment file and we have some API keys right here, which is something that we will do uh, uh, in the case of OpenAI's API, we are going to have this available inside of this particular file right here. All right, so the next thing is I'm going to go ahead and define the main function like this. Okay, so I'm just going to at this moment, I'm just going to print main function. And uh, to test this out, I'm just going to come here and then run this Python file. And as you can see, we have the main function printed right here. Perfect. So it is inside of this particular main function 
where we are going to write sub functions which are going to take care of every single step in this diagram that we saw right so the first thing is we will have to load all the files and then we have to chunk the files and then we have to embed and store it in the vector database okay so first off let's actually go ahead and prepare our source documents so as a first step i'm going to go ahead and copy paste a folder called docs okay so this is going to be our source documents so what i've essentially done is i have just gone to wikipedia and then i have downloaded the entire contents of five different companies so we have companies about uh, we have google microsoft nvidia spacex and tesla so if i go inside of here it would basically resemble the same text as wikipedia page so you can see these are huge text documents right okay it's you can see it's it's actually pretty huge and the same thing for microsoft uh tesla right so these are pretty huge text files and uh, this is what we are going to be working with in this tutorial so let's as a first step let's go ahead and load the files and uh, uh don't worry regarding the code i'll be providing you the repo link in the comments below okay so let's look at the first one the first one is we will have to load all the source documents into our file right here so that we can go ahead and chunk it right so to do this i'm going to go ahead and paste the load files method right here all right so let me go ahead and make this a little smaller so that you can see everything okay and then we can come down here and then we can invoke this particular this thing so we can call it docs because that is going to be the name of the folder right here okay so let's look at what this load documents is doing so uh, basically this is going to load all the text files from the docs directory uh we are first checking if the docs directory exists even okay so if that does not exist right here then we are just throwing an error saying that the directory does not exist so now we have to go ahead and load all the text files from the docs directory and for this i'm going to use the directory loader class from langchain so the first thing is we will have to provide the docs path right here so we've pointed it to this particular docs uh, folder and then we are also saying that the glob is going to be star dot txt so what this means is that we are basically telling the class okay only look for txt files okay if there are any ppt files or docx files or uh, pdf files don't worry about all of that only focus on star txt we can always extend it later and then as a third keyword parameter we have the loader okay so since we are dealing with text files we are going to be using the langchain text loader class but if you want to load pdfs or csv files we've got separate classes for that okay so we've got pdf loader we've got website loader we've got a bunch of other uh, loaders but since we are working with text files this is what we are going to be using and now the loader has been configured now we can go ahead and invoke the load method and that is going to give you a list of langchain documents this is important okay so this is going to have a list of five different langchain documents and the langchain documents are going to look something like this so let me actually go ahead and paste an example of what it looks like all right so this is how it looks like so this is going to be a list of five different langchain documents and each langchain document is going to have the page content attribute and the metadata attribute so since we are dealing with the first let's say uh, google.txt could be the first file so this first item is going to have uh, the entire contents of the google.txt inside of this page content so this is going to have the entire content of the entire uh, text file and then we are also going to have the metadata which is going to be auto populated so inside of this we have the source uh, this docs is something that we have specified and it's just going to take the name of the txt and the same thing for microsoft and nvidia and spacex all right so this is what we are going to get right here so we're just saying okay if the documents are uh, if the length of the documents is zero in that case okay no txt files were found but in our case when we run it we are actually going to see five different elements in the documents list all right and uh, and then we are just going to return it and uh, i'm just going to print some things so that we can actually see uh, everything in action okay just to make sure that everything is working fine so let's go ahead and run this python file and perfect let's expand this uh, the document one is this is going to be the name of the source uh, file we've got content length this is a lot of characters okay it chose to do the tesla first right and uh, we can also see the content preview okay it starts with tesla inc and uh, it uh, how to pronounce tesla so if we go inside of this particular file you can see this is exactly what we have okay so we have the entire content right here i've just truncated it uh, because we don't have the space to show everything 
in the terminal so uh yeah we also have source as well and perfect that is it for the first step so let's come down so the first loading the files is done let us now go back to our diagram and let's see what is next so now that we've loaded all of the do uh, documents now the next step is we have to chunk it so let's actually go ahead i'm going to go ahead and paste the chunking method right here and paste it over here okay and i'm also going to invoke it down here like this okay so we are passing in all the langchain documents that we have and we are passing it inside of this method right here called split documents and if you remember this output of the split documents uh, i mean the chunking method is going to be a list of smaller chunks so that is exactly what we get right here so this method you can see it splits documents into smaller chunks with overlap it takes in the chunk size okay in this case we are going to set the default value to 800 characters okay we're not dealing with tokens right now we're dealing with 800 characters the chunk overlap right now is zero we'll get to what that means in a minute so this is the major main method that we are going to be using this class character text splitter okay this is the most basic text splitting class that exists in langchain okay so later on there are more advanced uh, splitting methods we look at but right now we're just like learning to uh, crawl we're learning to walk right so this is what we're going to be starting with so now we are going to say okay go ahead and split all of the documents and now we have all the chunks right here and that's it okay we're just going to return it and in the middle i'm going to print something so that we can actually see how it has been chunked and uh, you know how many chunks are there so i can go ahead and run this file by saying python 3 ingestion pipeline dot py okay so also note that in the prints i've limited it to the first five chunks right here okay so we should be able to see the first five chunks so right here you can actually see the uh, it started with tesla.txt and then let's actually go to the file right here and let's see where the chunk starts and ends so tesla in can uh, if i uh, do this oh sorry um let's go all the way up again and all right so it ends at uh, the first chunk ends at related products and services related products and services right let's look at the second chunk where it starts Tesla was incorporated in July 2003. Okay, it starts here and then it ends at Tesla was A. Okay, so it ends at Tesla was A. And the third chunk is going to start probably here. Okay, so Giga, uh, Giga Factory Texas and it ends at company type public. So it ends right here. Okay, so that is exactly what we have. Okay, so we have five different chunks, but actually if you come all the way down, you can see we've got thousand 792 more chunks so that's a lot of different chunks that we have right here and at the end of the method we're also returning the chunks as well okay so we have all of the chunks ready right here the next step the third step is to send all of these chunks through the embedding model and convert it into the vector embedding and also store it in the vector db okay so that is exactly what we are going to be implementing so let me come up here and we are going to be pasting the third method right here you can see it looks pretty simple I'm just going to invoke this right here, pass in all of the chunks and then we are just going to have the vector store right here because it returns the vector store. So let's go ahead and see what is inside of this method. So uh, here we are passing in all of the chunks and then also the location where we want the vector database to be created locally. Okay, so we are going to create and persist the chroma DB vector store. So the first thing that we're doing is we are going to initialize the embedding model. So in the previous video, we saw that there are a couple of different OpenAI embedding models, right? So we saw text embedding three small, uh, which had like a default uh, dimension uh, size, uh, text embedding three large as well. So that was 3072, right? So in this case, we are going to be going with the small model. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And now we are going to go ahead and create the vector store. Okay, so this particular uh, method is going to do uh, two things, right? It is going to take all of the chunks, it's going to convert it into uh, the embedding, uh, the vector embedding versions, and then it is going to store it as well. So that is why it takes in all the chunks. Basically, these are lang chain documents only, but chunked smaller versions, right? So that is, uh, so if I come up here, this is also going to return uh, the lang chain documents, except they are uh, the the page content is going to be much more smaller. Okay, it's only going to contain like you know five hundred or thousand or whatever we set it. So we are going to have the Langchain documents come in here in the form of chunks. We are also specifying the embedding model to use for the uh, the, the vector DB. And then we're also saying, okay, this is where you need to store the, uh, the vector database. Okay, so locally we are saying, okay, store it right here. And then finally we have collection metadata 
and right here we are specifying the algorithm to be cosine similarity okay so this is something that we will circle back to in the fourth or the fifth video in the series but this is very important okay so this essentially just talks about you know what is the algorithm that the system is going to use to compare all these different chunks and retrieve the top quality chunks okay so we are going to be using something called cosine similarity but for now ignore this all right so once this is done we are just printing saying that you know uh, vector store has been uh, created and we are going to return the vector store okay so let's go ahead and run this file and hopefully okay so the reason why this is not working is the open ai api key environment key is not been added to the environment file okay so um, it's going to be very simple just go to platform.openai.com and if you go to settings and then click on uh, uh, api keys and then we can go ahead and create a, a key right here saying rag uh, tutorial okay i'm just going to copy it and come to the environment file okay so this is the variable that we need and then i'm just going to copy it put it over here okay that's it and one more thing uh, if you have not paid for it uh, it's just going to be costing you a minimum of five dollars okay just go to billing right here add that five dollars if you're based out of india it costs you some 400 300 rupees but uh, i have to assure you that it would very well last you for at least like four or five or six months of learning okay so this is a worthwhile investment later on uh, once you understand you know how things work then we can go for open source models and you know learn how to you know pull it from uh, olama and run it locally but since we're just starting to learn it is a worthwhile investment all right perfect so let's try it one more time so before i run it i'm just going to go ahead and uh, comment out all the prints so our terminal looks cleaner all right so let's run the file all right uh, so it is taking some time right here. So you can see it has started creating uh, embeddings and storing in Chroma DB. You can also see a new folder has been created. Right now it is empty. All right, guys, you can see uh, the vector store has been successfully created and it has been stored in DB Chroma DB, which is right here. Okay, you can see all the data has been populated. So if we come back to the diagram, we have completely uh, done this entire flow, right? We have chunked it. And now we have embedded all of the chunks and then we've stored it in the vector database as well. Okay, so if at all you want this code, it's all going to be available in the comments. I'll provide the repo right there. And in the next video, we are going to be tackling this retrieval pipeline. So I'm pretty excited. I will see you in the next video.